Welcome back, tribe. I have an episode here from The Life of Brian Show. He's 51 and he avoids people now. And here's why. He went viral for this, by the way. He got almost a million views. Probably got over a million right now. Actually, let me refresh. Hello, friends. I am out doing one of my typical walks. I recently turned 51 and uh, I try and work out every day. Health is very important. I get to the gym. Oh, yeah. And I try and go for my walks, do my cardio, watch my weight the best I can. Although I do like to eat and I am a foodie, but things get more difficult as you get older. More videos Hello. to come on that. But anyway, I'm out in my walk. Got to be careful. It's hunting season. I live out in a beautiful but pretty remote area. A lot of hunting going on right now. So hopefully I don't get shot. <laughs> but I wanted to tell you guys and ask you guys. Turning 50 was a very profound time for me. Probably one of the most profound times in my life. And, you know, I, I, you become more aware of time. Man, I, my game's over half over. Every day counts. You look back at your regrets, all kinds of different things. But one of the things about me, and I think a lot of you can relate to me, and I'm looking forward to your feedback on this, is when I was young, I was raised pretty good. I was a really nice, kind-hearted person. I was so naive about so many things. In, in school, we learn things, but we don't learn things like, you know, finances, how to handle money, red flags of relationships and personality disorders, getting involved with the wrong people with businesses, making bad business deals. We don't learn any of that. But, you know, I've found through time, having been a kind-hearted person, that as time has gone on and as I've aged, I don't like people the way I <laughs> used to. I could come up with a whole bunch of different reasons. Okay. Having the wrong people in my life, making very bad choices with business and relationships, seeing the other side of people. Not that I'm claiming to be perfect in any way. But I've just noticed that in life now, you know, with my clients, with my business, I give my clients 100% of myself. I'm very positive. I try my best to help them. But I notice that in general with people and socially now, I don't want to do much with people. On the social end of things, or and now, if somebody comes up to me and they're friendly to me, I, I naturally have, be, have become very suspicious. I'm like, oh, what does this person want? What's going on here? But I notice, I notice that just with people, I just, I don't know, I don't like people the way I used to. And, you know, it's very when we went through the pandemic, it was a very trying time, very sad time. You know, we'll, we'll keep all the conspiracy theories aside for right now, but. The pandemic showed people their true colors. You got two camps, bro. Jail, the non-vaxxers, they're killing us all. We need to remember how much danger they're putting us in. Y'all remember that? I remember that. Businesses forced to shut down. Government's not giving you proper support. At least in America, you got like one stimulus check and then, oh shit, this was lasting longer than one month in March. So like, where's the rest of the money? Oh yeah, PPP loans to businesses to help them survive. Oh, that shit got funneled up to rich people. And banks were charging fees for that too. They made millions just to disburse the PPP loans. What? Now you got families like fast forward, fast forward past turbo cancer and heart failures and all this other weird shit going on. Fast forward through all that. Now you can't even talk about politics anymore. Now the people that were screaming to put you in jail with the little snitch hotlines they had in California. My neighbor, my neighbor is having a party. There's three people surrounded in a fire. Call them. Call, call, get sent to police. Find them. Oh, yeah. We found out what people were really like during that little test run of what, what the fuck was happening. Then they were arresting people even on the beach, bro, jogging. You were jogging by yourself. Six foot distance rule. OK, fine. I'm on the beach. I'm on the beach and they're bothering me alone, not next to anyone. Fines. No shit. People don't trust each other anymore. <laughs> it's gotten a little weird out there lately. One of the things I love most, well, for the first part of it, I was in a very, very awful relationship with someone who had borderline personality disorder. But uh, when I got out of that and I lived on my own, one of the things I loved most was going into a grocery store 20 minutes at night before it closed, 20 minutes before it closed, getting my groceries and just hiding from people. I'm almost... I've become almost a social recluse. Why though? Uh, I don't trust people. I hate drama. Okay. And uh, I don't know. That's how I am. Yeah, don't, as I said, don't get me wrong. I'm still, I can be friendly and I have, I'm very good with my clients on a professional level. I give them the best of me, but uh, I wonder if that's happened to all of you or some of you out there as we age. Have you gotten more jaded, more suspicious of people? Uh, you know, a person I used to know. It's like the get off my lawn, old man, the. Angry old man. I wonder why that happens, actually. Oh, 
10 yeah. years ago and spend time with. He popped up in my feed today on uh, my new Facebook account. I'm not, I'm not big on social media, which is really weird. It's really weird that I'm not a big fan of people because uh, I got I'm starting this YouTube channel, but, uh, it just, it popped up. It brought back some memories and on his friends list, it's the same silly people, the same losers, the same people that haven't grown or changed at all. I was like, man, maybe I've changed, but I want to ask all of you out there. Have you found with age getting on in your 50, getting into your 50s, maybe late 40s? Is that something that's normal? Do you just kind of try to avoid people and just keep yourself more and more <laughs> grumpy? You get more grumpy. suspicious of people and uh, you just don't like people as much. Is that normal? I don't what know. do you guys think? Comment below. So if you can hit like and hit subscribe, I know it's annoying. It's annoying to ask people. Anyways, that was a real short one, but I have to read these comments because this popped off for some reason. Uh, the only regret I have is wasting my time on the wrong people. That's huge. I get, we're, look, man, we're social creatures. We all long to be accepted and be part of a group and having friends, but it can't be at the expense of yourself. You can't throw away your principles and your values just to get a friend. That's most likely not even high quality friend, because if you have to throw those away, if you have to break and bend who you are in order to gain a friend, that's not a friend you want to have in the first place. So many people crave this connection that they're willing to do that, sell themselves short in order to have a friend. And so many people end up in the wrong groups of people, man, that actually tend to hold you back and are a negative aspect to your life, not a, a group that fosters growth, that holds you accountable, that wants to make you better. It sucks to be surrounded by your enemies. This one says, I like being alone. People are mostly troubled in their worth. Again, this is also a Western problem because when you go out further east or in other parts of the world in general, this is not an issue, guys. So we have some sickness within Western culture that's causing old people to completely like, uh, you know, become hermits and recluses in the social world. We have a weird setup where like 18, get out the house, go to college, make a man or a woman of yourself, get out, go do your own thing. Um, Americans specifically, I could juxtapose this with like my family here in Eastern Europe, um, uncles, aunts, nephews, nieces, grandma, grandpa, all of us are very close. All of us see each other often. It's not weird that people live even close to like across the street, a few houses down, whatever from your family members in America, people are completely disconnected. My American friends have almost no relationships with their parents. Very rare that they have good relationships in college. My American friends were shocked that I would speak with my family multiple times a week, just checking in, just shooting the shit, just updating one another. How's everything? Are you eating? Life's good. How's school? Are you learning? Blah, blah, blah. Every week it was normal. How are you guys doing over there? Everything okay? Eh, 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 okay. But I had American friends that hadn't talked to their parents in years. Grandparents forget about it. They don't even know what their grandparents are doing. That shit comes off strange to an immigrant. To every immigrant that comes to the United States from all these other parts of the world, American family structure is deeply broken. So it makes sense to me in some way that at 51, he most likely isn't close to his family. No one keeps in touch with each other. No one's celebrating or has like the festive spirit for Christmas or New Year's or Easter. You know, all the Christian religion is basically on life support in America. Um, that's another thing that brought people together a lot is the holidays and the festivities. In Eastern Europe, it's still a big thing. And what are you left with in society? We have a culture where people try to fuck each other out of every dollar that they possibly can. Like people here actively look for getting something out of you. How can I earn a buck off this dude? So when you're lived in a culture that rewards chasing the dollar at the expense of everything else, money, 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 profit, profit, profit. Yeah, dude, at a certain age, don't you get sick of that shit and you just want to retract from it all and just be like, I'm good, man. I'll be here on my property hunting, fishing. Don't want no drama, no nasty people around me, no woman draining my wallet or whatever. And OK, with my dog and just living the rest of my life, having worked hard as hell to get here and finally be somewhat free, I'll just cruise and enjoy retirement. I mean, it makes sense. But for the rest of us in the other parts of the world, like that huge extended family structure breeds life into people, man. You, you don't become isolated. You're very social. You still have a lot of say and respect in the family. You know, like imagine, imagine you're the, at his age approaching what you would normally be a grandfather and your son at his age would normally be starting his own family. So you have like, you're at the peak of that pyramid in terms of leading the family still until your son fully takes the reins as you get too old to, you know, maybe still earn work or contribute in any way. 
but that wisdom you have is passed down to your son and to your grandson like that that generational leap is missing in a lot of americans and it's sad this one says my late dad had a saying you're lucky if you have one true friend in life most people don't even find one i used to hate that saying now but it makes much more sense <laughs> the more people you know the more you love animals I'm 55 years old since I was very young, age two, three, and four. How do you remember that shit? I've always been a loner all throughout my entire school-like uh, life. From kindergarten to high school, I only had one friend I met in the seventh grade. Our friendship lasted two years. Once we got to high school, she made friends with the in crowd, and I stayed by myself. So this is a woman. To this day, I don't have a single friend, not one. Holidays and birthdays are spent alone. This is sad. I have co- Where's your family? I have coworkers, but they're not friends. Do I dislike people? In my teens, I did. Today. Do I dislike people? No, not really. I just haven't come across anyone I'd like to be friends with. It takes effort, guys. You have to go into like-minded groups. So for example, if you have an interest in um, mountain biking, for example, you have to go to mountain biking clubs to find people who are into the same things you are because just the way the world is wired today, we are in a sense more connected than we've ever been, but also more disconnected than we've ever been. You just have to search it out. You have an easier time to find like-minded people today. Yet it's harder to make genuine connections within your immediate vicinity because the access to technology as it's all in like a spellbound trance. So the weird things like mountain biking, hiking, rock climbing, all these things, go to a boxing gym, whatever, is easier to find today with access to the internet and all the information. And you can find that in crowd. You could find your own little tribe. You just have to look for it today because society has expanded to an unreasonable degree, dude. We're no longer connected by just the little towns we live in. Most people are ushered into these giant cities. You don't even know who the person is that's across the hallway from you in your apartment that you live in. You know, that's another problem in America. Like we don't even know our neighbors anymore. Even the even the houses that I was you know renting while staying there, the neighbors didn't speak to one another. There was no neighborhood get together. It's very sterile. It was just like quickly get in your garage, get out of your car, get get close the garage, mind your business, take your groceries in there. You got to wave at most. And then it was just people like wanting to mind their own business. Fuck off. Don't talk to me. You crazy ass liberal or crazy ass conservative or you're crazy ass whatever it is that they like apply to you because of how radicalized shit has gotten. We don't love our neighbors anymore, guys. And it's evident. You step outside, you see everybody as like a threat potentially. You see everybody as like the cause of your problems. You're a victim somehow. It's their fault. This shit has gotten this hard. And we fail to look up. At the people that make the rules, the ones that institute all the policy, the ones that get on their knees and suck off the corporate cocks, the ones that bend over and get reamed up the ass by special interests. Yeah, we don't look up to them and ask them questions. Why the fuck shit's getting so difficult? They got us trained perfectly like little laptops to look at each other with hate. And so we're blinded to the truth. It is what it is, you know? Team Red and Team Blue have this game plan down packed, dude, because we've been going downhill for like 50, 60 years now, guys. It doesn't matter who gets in there. Orange Man can try, but he has to answer to higher powers than himself. So we'll see what he can get done in four years. I'm curious. Like I said, I'm politically homeless. I've said this before. I'm not for any team. They all make campaign promises only during the election time. Half of them are forgotten. Then the special interest in corporations come in. Then they ask for their dues for funding the uh, the campaign and all the other financial bullshit to get you elected. And, you know, shit moves on in the world. And if you're poor, you get fucked and left behind. What's new, dude? Anywho, if you enjoyed today's episode, guys, and you want to see more, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment what you think about the system. And uh, maybe his question, too, that he was posing. And life for the older people. And how you guys are getting along in this crazy world. And we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everyone.